Hey, Kara. Welcome. Welcome to the show. We're going to begin promptly at 830. And uh, you guys can get your pen and paper together. And I'm going to find my glasses. So here they are. So I can actually see you all. Okay, that would be good. Clean them off. Thank you, darling. These were handmade by my good friend, Nicole, who has a lovely uh, jewelry company. These are actually leather earrings that she's adorned and they're wonderful. Thank you so much. You guys feel free to share this video. I think you can share it outside of the group, but if you can, go ahead and share it. And we'll begin in a second. Making sure I have all my notes here for all the wonderful information I'm about to share. All right. Hey, Miss Juanita Thomas, how are you, dear? Welcome to the show. Tips from a recruiter. Now, last week, I had an issue with saving this video. Um, so I hope I will not have this issue this week because I need to put this on Instagram and all over the internet so people can get it. Uh, let's see. Okay, hopefully I can figure this out. We have three more minutes. Uh, go ahead and share this uh, link if you can. If not, we're just going to do what it does. Two more minutes, so if you guys want to go grab your favorite drink, uh, beverage, snack, whatever you want, relax, sit back, and get ready to get these wonderful tips. We're going to go through it very quickly. This is a half-hour show, 
and I want you all to get this very valuable information. Okay, it is 8.29 p.m. on Tuesday evening, February 16th. Welcome everyone on In Internet Land and on Facebook. This show is called Tips from a Recruiter. Excuse me, hashtag Tips from a Recruiter. My name is Vanessa Maddox. I am the creator of Tips from a Recruiter. And I've been broadcasting this video series since 2014. And it has been a part of the hashtag get hired employment community since 2014. I actually started get hired in 2010. So I come on every week, once a week, and I give you tips from a real life recruiter been doing this for a long, long time. I actually love the industry. I love what I do. And uh, this is my give back to job seekers. And it's also a resource for hiring managers, talent acquisition professionals, uh, workforce professionals, and the like. So tonight's topic is interview readiness. So we're in a pandemic, okay? The job numbers are abysmal. Not going into that tonight, don't have enough time. But if you care to keep informed on what the Bureau of Labor Statistics and other think tanks and organizations are tracking in terms of job numbers you can go to the you can google the bureau of labor statistics they'll give you a lot of that information my good good girlfriend she's amazing i love her jamie nidig she's on here now jamie is a labor economist and we also co-host a weekly political show called blue conversations and she has really really sharpened my skills in terms of stats and numbers, uh, anything you want to know about has a statistic attached to it. So thank you, Jamie. I'm glad you're on this evening. So relax and let's get into it. So tonight's topic, as I said, interview readiness. So I'm going to give you three tips, but those three tips have multiple steps. So don't think you're getting off easy. Okay? Okay. All right, let's go into the first step. But before I start the first step to interview readiness, I want to uh, address one of the most popular questions from my show last week. Hold on, let me make sure. Okay, fine, it's good. I want to address one of the most popular questions from my show last week when I was talking and when the subject was all about resumes. And one of the most asked questions after that show was, I didn't know you weren't supposed to put your address on your resume anymore. That is absolutely correct, people. So addresses on resumes are no longer necessary. They are passe, and it's also now in 2021, a safety measure, okay? No more addresses on resumes, people. All you need is your name, a good email, where you, uh, email that you actually check, okay? Let's make that clear. Your cell number, and if you're smart, 
a URL to your LinkedIn profile. And why do I say if you're smart? Because if you're a job seeker, LinkedIn is your Bible, all right? Can't get around it, gotta use it, all right? Recruiters live on LinkedIn. So in order for you to get the attention and for your resume to get the attention you want, you gotta be there. So no more addresses, people. If you check your resume after the show, make sure you take your address off. All right, first step for interview readiness. Once you've gotten the call from the recruiter and the recruiter has done their pre-screening, that's what we do, okay? And the recruiter says, well, Sarah, I think you're a great candidate. Uh, your resume seems to align very well with our requisition, our requirements. I'd like to get you in front of the hiring manager, okay? So the interview is now scheduled, all right? Once that interview is scheduled and it hits your calendar, and oh, by the way, please have an active calendar online on your phone or have a paper calendar that you keep up with. But write it down. Don't keep it up here because something's going to happen and you're going to forget. All right? Soon as that uh, scheduled meeting hits your calendar, you want to start your research. Okay? First thing you want to do is that you want to go and do your research on the company's website. All right? You want to find out who the leaders are. I'll get back to leadership in a second. You want to know the structure of their leadership team. Here's a note. If you go to a company, you click on management, and you don't see anyone on that management team that looks like you, close the website, move on to the next company. Because guess what? Companies need to look like America and the public that they serve. You don't have to read between those lines, okay? You know what I'm talking about, DEI, all right? They got to reflect diversity, equity, and inclusion. Otherwise, don't waste your time. All right, now, I want you to develop 10 interview questions. Now, remember, we're still on part one. The three parts, we're still on part one. You want to sit down and put together, according to the job description, what the job entails and what information the recruiter share with you in the initial screening. You want to write down 10 predetermined, pre-prepared interview questions. These are questions that you're going to save to the very end of the interview. And when they ask you, do you have any questions? Oh, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. And you whip out your paper with those 10 questions. Now, if the recruiter and the hiring manager has done their job well, most of your 10 questions would have been answered in the actual interview. But if they are not, you are armed and ready at the end of the interview to go down the row and ask your questions. I don't care if you have 20 questions, ask all 20 of them, all right? Take the time, they're there to interview you, but you're there to also interview them. You're gonna spend, an, you're going to spend an inordinate amount of time with these people at work, so you wanna make sure that they are people that you wanna spend time with, okay? So you have your 10 questions. All right, next, you want to research, pre-interview, you want to research the recruiter and the hiring manager. Now, if you are going to be subjected to a panel interview, which actually I prefer panel interviews, because you get through everybody in one shot and you don't have to come back 20 times. I like panel interviews. I actually thrive in them. 
Other people, eh, you know, pick your poison. So let's say it's a regular interview, one-on-one -on -one with the hiring manager and maybe an HR rep. You want to do research on the hiring manager and you want to do research on anyone else that you are planning to, inter to be interviewed by. Question, well, Vanessa, how do I know who the hiring manager is? is? It's a little search engine called LinkedIn. It's another big search engine called Facebook. Everybody and their mama is on Facebook, whether they want to admit it or not. If you can't find them on LinkedIn, you can't find them on Facebook, you go to Twitter, you go to Instagram, you go to, you go to Clubhouse, you go to Tumblr, you go to MeWe, you go to wherever they are or you think they are. They're going to be somewhere and you're going to be able to find out some basic information on them. All right. You want to go in armed with all of your weapons in your toolkit or tools in your toolbox, however you want to say it. All right. Next, <clears throat> pre-interview. You want to do your revenue and stability research on the company. What does that mean, Vanessa? That means you want to find out their five years previous revenue and you want to look forward five to 10 years projected forecasted revenue. You want to figure out if you're going to have a check down the road. Let's keep it simple, all right? You don't want to step out either being unemployed or coming from a stable position that you've been in for a while, you want to see what else is out there, testing the waters. You don't want to step out of one situation and step into something that you're not sure about. So check their stats. What does Jay-Z say? Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Check your numbers. Okay. Go to hoovers.com. If you've been listening to this show for any amount of time, I talk about hoovers.com every week. Go to hoovers.com and look up the company you're interviewing for. Check five years previous, five to 10 years forward, forecasting revenue. Okay. Make sure you're comfortable with what they, what kind of money they've been making. All right. Also, when you're researching the recruiters, hiring managers, HR people, you want to go to LinkedIn, you want to go to Facebook, and you also want to look up uh, for the HR people, you want to check SHRM, S-H-R-M, and you want to check whatever social media platforms you, you think they're on. Okay. Now, you get to the interview. Make sure I'm not jumping ahead. Okay. You get to the interview. You're in the interview. It's going well. You've gotten to the point where they've asked you all the questions they want to ask. You've asked all the questions you want to ask. People, do not discuss salary unless it's bought up by the interviewers. Let me repeat that for the people in the back. Do not discuss salary until they bring it up. And when they bring it up, you're going to already be prepared and armed because you went on salary.com, you went on Glassdoor Salary, and you did your research on hoovers.com and you know what that standard salary range is for the position you are interviewing for. If you don't know that information going in, shame on you, you're not going to get the job. Okay? Pre preparation, preparation, preparation. Know how much you know your value going in and add 10%.
What's that? Set your range, add 10%. Because wherever you fall, they are going to fall somewhere in that range unless you already know what the job pays. Okay? Do not sit in that interview and say, how much is this job paying? They're going to escort you out. Don't do it. Okay? Now, I need for some of your 10 pre-prepared interview questions to be related to DEI. Very important. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Here's a question that I used to ask all the time, and it always stumped them because they're not ready for it. But this is a great tip from a recruiter, and it's a secret, okay? Ask them, can you please talk about your DEI uh, processes and uh, forethought for the company? Explain how you all embrace and approach diversity, equity, and inclusion. If they give you the deer in headlights look, you may want to think about it. Okay? If they are serious about DEI, then they're going to have a well thought out response for you. Or it's even acceptable for them to say, you know, Vanessa, I'm not quite sure of where we stand on our numbers, but I will absolutely grab that data for you and send it to you. That is an acceptable answer. It still means they weren't quite prepared, but at least they were upfront and authentic and, and forthcoming with that. All right. They're not going to lie. Those, those are important, all right? Um, let's say, let's see, where were we? Okay, that was just, that was just number two. Okay, let's go into number three. You're getting toward the end of the interview. You think it's going well. You're getting good fuzzy feelings. Uh, and they say, hey, if we were to move forward and make you an offer, when would you be available to start? Now, let's talk about that statement for a minute. That statement could mean one or two things. Either they're very interested and they want to make you an offer, or they, it's between you and another top candidate, and they're feeling you out because they do like you, okay? Let's say you're in the top two. Don't mince words with them. Ask them straight out, and this is what you say. How soon would you want to bring someone on? And how do I match up to the other candidates? Come straight out and ask. Don't be shy about it. Take your confidence pill before you get there and ask. They're either going to answer you, they're going to say, but, 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 or they're going to say, we'll get back to you. One out of three. Okay? Let's repeat that. How soon do you want to bring someone on? And how do I measure up to the other candidates? How many final candidates do you have? Ask that. Okay? You want to know. Because that, that gives you the information you need to either continue to pursue or keep it moving to other companies. Valuable information. Okay? All right. We're at 848. I'm going to recap and then I'm going to take some questions. I have my phone here and I can see what you all are asking. So go ahead and start putting your questions in the chat, in the comment section, 
and then I'm going to go through them as soon as I recap. Okay. All right. Number one, have your 10 pre-prepared interview questions done. Slip them in your portfolio, your binder, or whatever you're taking with you to the interview and whip those babies out when it's time to ask those questions. All right. Once you receive the interview call, excuse me, once you see the call, schedule the interview, start your research then. You're researching the company on Hoover's. You're researching the recruiter and the hiring manager and maybe an HR person on LinkedIn or whatever other social media channel you think you can find them on. Okay. One thing I've almost forgot to mention, when you're speaking to the hiring manager, you've done your research. Make sure you have found some commonalities with that hiring manager. Remember, remember, people have huge egos and you need to play into that ego as much as possible. All right. Mr. Jones, I noticed on your LinkedIn, you had a picture with your Dalmatian. I love dogs. What's your dog's name? People love talking about their pets as much as they like talking about themselves. Keep that in mind. All right, back to the list. You've done your research on the recruiter, the company, the hiring manager, HR person, You've uh, developed your commonalities to bring up in the conversation. You've researched the CEO. Research them. You've looked at their management team. If the management team does not look like America, keep it moving. You have researched their DEI programs and approach. Okay. You've put your DEI questions in your 10 pre-prepared questions and you've wrapped up the interview. Oh, sorry. Before that, you have gone five years back and you've gone five years to 10 years ahead to see the stability of the company and their revenue generation. You're wrapping up the interview. You've asked when they want to fill a position. You've asked how you measure up against the other uh, candidates. You've asked where you're sitting in the consideration, and that's pretty much it. Now, as soon as you leave their building, go to your car, sit there, and write a thank you email before you even pull out of the parking lot. Or if you hang up the Zoom, you are going immediately to your email to write a thank you note. Now, if you really want to make an impression, you grab one of their business cards or ask the receptionist on your way out for a business card and you go and get you a nice little thank you note from the CVS, Walgreens, wherever, and you compose a handwritten thank you note to that hiring manager. And let me just tell you, It absolutely works every time. Absolutely. Quick story. A few years back, interviewing for a job, got the job, came into my first day, walked into my manager's office. What's the first thing I saw? My thank you note sitting on her desk. I just bust out laughing. She said, what's so funny? And I told her the story. And she said, Vanessa, no one in 25 years has ever written me a thank you note and mailed it. True story. Keep that in mind. All right. We're at 852. Let's get to some questions. All righty. Let's see who we have here. Uh, Let's see. Let's see. Yes, Herb. No more home addresses. Okay. One thing I do want to mention that may not occur to people. You always, always, always need to keep a copy of your resume and your three professional references on your phone all the time. Never, 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 ever, ever 
tell a recruiter or a hiring manager, oh, I'll get back to you as soon as I get home. You're going to miss out on the position. Don't do that. Always be prepared. Resume, three professional references on your phone at all times. Okay? Let's see if we have any questions. Shelly has a question. How do I know the name of the hiring manager? I think I stated this, but there are ways for you to find out. You can either dig deep into LinkedIn on the company website, and you can pretty much figure out who they are, or you can find someone in the company that's in your LinkedIn profile, go through their connections, and find out who you're interviewing with. Nine times out of 10, everyone in the company is connected to the other person in the company on LinkedIn, okay? And there are other ways to find out as well, okay? Uh, that's always a hard thing because I say my target salary is X and I'm potentially lowballing myself. You're not lowballing yourself if you've already done the salary research, develop your range, add 10%. Okay? Lance asks, how are virtual interviews different than in-person interviews? Do you have to prepare differently? Absolutely not. The preparation is the same. The difference between on-site and Zoom interviews is that you have to make sure that you are in a quiet area. No kids, dogs, or sirens. Okay? I mean, you can't avoid a siren, but you can uh, get rid of the kids and the dog. All right? Make sure you're in solitude, you're focused, and that it is quiet. All right? When I send interview confirmations to candidates, I put on the end, please be in a quiet area for the call. Why do you think I do that? It's happened a lot of times, okay? All right. I don't see any other questions. Does anybody have any parting questions or comments? Don't be shy, ask away. Yes, uh, remember, you are interviewing them as just as much as they are interviewing you, even more so, because they are somewhat in control because they are going to offer you a salary and benefits, but you are also in control because you are a sought-after professional. You have the skill set, you have the know-how, you have the confidence, and they're vying for you as well because they invited you to the interview. If they weren't remotely interested, you would have never gotten a call back. So please remember that. They are not holding all the cards, okay? All right, okay. All right, okay. That's it, folks. That has been Interview Readiness. My name is Vanessa Maddox. This has been hashtag tips from a recruiter. And I will be back next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. I think it's going to be 830 as well. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, associates, anyone that is unemployed, underemployed, changing careers, or wanting to just do something new. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.